All right, so let's get started. So um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is our monthly call uh, with this with the community to community to discuss the topics related to the growing and sustaining the Zeek community. And this call will be public and then uh, it's recorded and it will be shared later on. So hi, Robin, and hi, Richard, and hi, Salma. So I will, uh, I got a ping from Johanna yesterday that she's not able to make this meeting. And really for the LT update, we don't have much of the updates because there is not much going on with the LT right now. So I will, I will just ask Robin if he would like to give any updates on um, the, the technical side. Sure, happy to do that. Um, let me see. So I think we had quite a bit of activity recently just on, on a bunch of smaller stuff. So um, fixing bugs, uh, polishing things, CI documentation. Um, I think the largest feature maybe that went in recently was um, the new event tracing that, that Vern wrote, um, which is interesting. So that is um, essentially when you, what, what it allows you to do is give Zeek a trace and it records all the events that it generates on this trace to a disk. And then you can, in a subsequent run, you can restart Zeek and it will replay those events just being recorded even without that trace. Um, that's, that's cool. And <laughs> the neat trick is that actually the recording of the trace is a Zeek script. So <laughs> Vern came up with this clever idea where he basically uh, records a sequence of uh, event uh, invocations as a Zeek script. So basically the, the thing is uh, self-contained. Uh, so it's a, it's a pretty neat feature. Um, you see, maybe if I can talk about what's coming next. So I think the next larger merge is probably uh, Tim's rewrite of the DNS manager. So there was like one of these pieces of code that has been in uh, Zeek forever. Not everybody might actually know that Zeek is doing DNS itself. Uh, so it's not, not in the sense of parsing DNS, but it's actually um, talking DNS for, for resolving host names. And that code was essentially low level uh, code written manually a long time ago. So we replaced that with a library. Um, and, and that is going to come in soon and, and cleaning that part up quite a bit. Um, then we are, I think, getting ready for a large broker merge. So that has been working um, pending for a while. Um, we've kind of stripped down the, the scope a little bit, but it will be a, essentially a re architecture of broker internally, cleaning it up, um, making it easier to maintain going forward. So that is just in the in the last round of testing, though I think I just saw that we might have, a, have an issue with logs not showing up with <laughs> the new code. So we might need another iteration there. Um, actually, another piece coming in with that is that on the broker side, um, we are planning to switch out the serialization format to something more standard, like message pack or so. Um, that is something that this new architecture uh, facilitates. And I'm actually just um, testing something Dominic recently added in a branch, and that is the WebSocket interface. So that um, in the future, the goal is that you can send events into Zeek or get events out of Zeek remotely, um, actually without broker, um, but through standard WebSocket. And, and that I think will be very cool. It's something I'm, I'm uh, uh, testing at the moment by trying to get it into the Zeek agent so that the Zeek agent can uh, send events into broker, uh, sorry, into Zeek that way eventually and, and won't need broker anymore, which actually would uh, shrink the size of that binary quite a bit. Um, let me see, maybe uh, what I think we haven't talked about in, this, in these community calls yet is our plan for SPICY to go into Zeek 5.0. So we have been going a bit back and forth and what is the best way to get uh, or to have SPICY become like a standard part of Zeek? Should it be a dependency for Zeek or should it actually go right in? And we decided on the latter. So um, the goal is with 5.0, um, SPICY will ship with Zeek um, and the SPICY plugin will be built statically into Zeek. So essentially the um, goal is that everybody who runs Zeek starting with 5 will automatically have the whole SPICY infrastructure in place. Um, and uh, Benjamin is working on making that happen at the moment. So the, essentially the build systems need to be merged. Um, then ah, the, 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 the other larger piece of course is something that Christian is working on and maybe I can put him on the spot here for an update for the cluster controller. 
<laughs> Nicely spotted. Yes, uh, no, happy to. Um, so that work has been going on for, I think, uh, the last two Zeek releases now. Um, and this is the, the eventual replacement of, of Z control, right? Uh, with a more modern service oriented architecture. And the initial releases were basically focused on getting a bunch of the sort of, you know, uh, basic infrastructure in place, meaning that you can, um, that we have the right primitives for event-based communication between the components in this new framework. There is, there is a controller, which is basically the, the, the central entity now managing clusters. There are agents that are basically instances of Zeek running on every physical machine you have in your cluster, and they basically jointly manage this, this, this cluster going forward. The, the moniker this runs under is now the, the management framework. We sort of we, we used to call it the cluster controller and it was a little sort of awkward because there is already you know this this existing cluster framework and since the the express purpose of this new framework is to manage the cluster we switched to management framework um and so most of this basic infrastructure is in place now and i'm basically just starting to go to uh, a long list that we have and uh, of of all the the capabilities in z control and sort of checking them off and seeing how well and whether um, that functionality can be moved over into the new framework and 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 working away at that. Um, so things like you know like deploying configurations, uh, uh, equivalents of of sort of you know more more useful little um, uh, features in Z control like this 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 print command that was there are now there. So it's it's slowly coming together. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, in the not very distant future, like a couple of weeks away or so, I could I could do something a little bit more dedicated to this topic, so to actually show it to people. But it it sits there right now. It's it's available in you know in in 4.1. Uh, it's it's certainly in master. You need to give it one extra uh, flag to configure to enable the the client that is you know driving your that is your user interface to this this framework um, to be installed. Um, and then you can take it from there. But I'm hoping that you know when it really comes to allowing people to experiment with this, we can hopefully provide a little, a little bit more infrastructure, so you don't literally have to figure out everything sort of from 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 step one. Um, yeah, I, I think that's sort of my my summary about that one. Cool. Thanks, Christian. And and thanks for reminding me that I cannot call it the cluster controller anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's the management framework. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's actually maybe the one thing that the Zeek agent I can maybe uh, mention. So this is our new experimental, uh, new again, maybe, the new again experimental uh, endpoint monitor talking to Zeek feeding uh, endpoint data into Zeek. Um, that is coming along, we, we keep working on that. And the news thing there that's coming soon, I believe, is a Windows port. Um, Tim has been working on that. So all the tables that the um, agent currently supports will soon also be available on, on Windows systems. So that's pretty cool. And then basically then we got uh, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows covered with pretty much the same tables. Um, there's more to come there. It's still early, but I think it's uh, actually in a state that people can start trying it out if they want to. Yeah, I think that's, that's all I can think of. Adima, thanks. Perfect. That's a great set of updates uh, and a lot. So thank you so much, Robin and Christian, for sharing those. I had a quick question, though. Uh, so for the, uh, well, I'll ask Richard for the documentation part, but I had a personal question about the agent. So is there uh, like documentation available where users can find it and then see that how they can install the agent and how it's how to get it running and stuff like that? Yes, so it's 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 on GitHub. It's uh, in the in this in the uh, Zeek organization. It's called Zeek Agent V2 because it's it's a re-implementation of the old one. The old one is archived. Um, if you go to the wrong one, you will see that you are on the wrong one. Um, so and there's a README. So the README is 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 not going into a lot of detail at the moment, but it does get you started. So basically, it shows you how to install, how to run it, um, what what the tables. Um, in the are in there that, that it provides and also actually that shows an interactive mode which i think is pretty neat and new compared to the old one where you can actually explore the tables to see what data um, the agent provides with an interactive console console so you get a little bit of um, how to use it you don't get a lot of how it internally works and and and, and further detail and we're working on that awesome cool Perfect. So that's a neat segue to the documentation part update. So Richard, do you mind sharing any updates on the documentation part of Zeek? Sure. Yeah, I guess the biggest news, we've got one more Zeek in action that came out uh, recently. It was a part one on comparing NetFlow with Zeek 
And uh, I just recorded and scheduled the premiere for part two, which will premiere this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. So anyone who would like to join that, please uh, feel free. Um, I'll be in the chat answering questions if I can. And uh, thanks to everyone who showed up for the last premiere. That was pretty neat. We, I think we doubled our attendance from the first time we did a premiere, which is great. So um, yeah, feel free to stop by. The, I put a link in the, a tweet I sent out this morning and I also put it in the general channel on the Zeke Slack. So look forward to seeing people checking out that video. And if you have um, something else that you'd like us to do a video on, uh, let me know what, uh, to the extent we can do it, we'll, we'll try that. Um, apparently NetFlow is a very popular topic. It's one of the more popular videos in our, our library now. So I don't, I don't quite get that, but that's fine. Uh, maybe it was just uh, attracting people who knew NetFlow, but not Zeke. So uh, this next video will give sort of a comparison and why um, NetFlow can sort of start you to answering some questions, but Zeke, you, you just get so much more for free that um, if you've not, if you're familiar with NetFlow, but if you've, you've not tried Zeke, it's really worth your time to check it out. Perfect. Thanks. Um, that reminds me when you said that Netflix is pretty popular. I think back in the days, I had a like really crazy idea, and I think I, I talked to Seth about it. That uh, we had a challenge that we had a shop. It, it had like heavy net flow, but I'm so much keen into like doing the Zeke log analysis that I'm just like kind of like I blank out on Netflix. And I was like, it is not giving me enough information. So I was asking Seth that if Zeke can tweak the um, like the um, it can if it can recreate the actual connections with the NetFlow records, like if it, if, if it can ingest the NetFlow and produce Zeke logs out of it, then that would be super cool because that would kind of like help noobs like me who have to like go back and see how NetFlow works and what different bits and pieces means. So that was interesting. So cool. cool. What, what did he answer? <laughs> he said that they have thought about it, but there was not much of like usage that like there's like two different communities that are like super headstrong in using one or the other. And they said, he said that it would not be a lot of beneficial to go that route that, hey, if you have NetFlow, it, uh, feed it into Zeek and it will produce the Zeek logs for you. And a lot of information is already lost uh, by the time you collect the NetFlow. So Zeek implementation would just give you the connections um, uh, stitched together. So which is again, like if you are a pro NetFlow, then you don't need those Zeek connections anymore. So I was like, hmm, okay. So that was, I, you know, that was just like a cool side fun story that I remember from my back in the days that Richard mentioned that, you know, people are now uh, more uh, focused on how the, to differentiate between Zeke logs and NetFlow and what is their purpose. So that just reminded me of that instant. All right, so uh, Ashish is not there. We have two subgroups um, uh, that, well, sub subcommittees that work on the testing part and the training part. So I can give the update on the Zeek training part. So we haven't had a chance to meet uh, in past few weeks because there were like uh, conflicts of um, calendars of different people, but we do have an update. So coming up in next month in May, on May 20th, we are planning to provide a Zeek training. It will be a one day event. So that will be similar to what we do in our Zeek weeks. So now our um, our goal is to give the bi yearly training. So one will be one will happen in the first half, and then the second one will happen in the second half of the year, and that second half will be Zeek week. So now because of the popularity, and then people keep asking us that, hey, do you provide training other than the Zeek week training? Then we just kind of like came up with this idea that we should at least provide one training in the first half of the year. So now we have a date penned down. So there will be soon a blog post going on with the registration details and. Uh, what will be provided in the training and so on and so forth in the next few days. So I'm working on that blog post, but yeah, 20th May is our uh, final date where we will be providing. It's a Friday. So the first half will be introduction to Zeke, similar to what we do in the Zeke week. And it will be me and Keith providing that training. And then the second half will be advanced Zeke scripting. That will be Ashish's training. So look forward, looking forward to it. And then look forward for, an, uh, for a blog post that will have all the information on how to, how to get registered to that training. So that was just like a single piece of update from the training part. And with that, I think we have uh, pretty much covered the agenda for today. So if there are any questions or comments or new topics that we can discuss, there are any questions from the people? 
Quick question, Fatima, on the training, that's such good news. Is there a limit to the number of people that can attend? Will you have, will it be a registration limit? Uh, that's a good question, Greg. So the limit will again be the same as uh, the Zoom limit. So I think we have a room of 500 people, if I'm not sure, oh, but I okay. can double check. Uh, so, uh, and that was uh, that was the challenge for last year as well, because the, the training was remote and not everyone who registered were able to get into the training. So they were like, hey, we cannot get into the training. So the limit is just because of the Zoom room limit that we have for the for the online part. So that will be the same. So I'm not remembering correctly. I think it's either 200 or 500. So okay. people can correct me if they remember because I don't want to give a false impression of the how many number, like the number of how many people will be joining, or like maximum number of people that can join. I think Amber would have known, but I don't know if it's just a matter of paying some money to increase the ceiling um, and meet a bigger demand, then I think um, we should be able to do that. But it sounds like there's no inherent limit to the scalability because you're not doing a lot of hands-on teaching. You're not doing labs or anything. It's, it's more traditional instruction where you're, you're pouring content in. So if, if we had 500, that would be okay from your perspective. Awesome. That's great. So that's a good, good question. I will take a note and then I will verify what the limit is. And if we can bump it up, then that would be really great. Um, I only ask because I know the, the waiting list after, after Zeke week was pretty large. So um, maybe, maybe we wouldn't hit 500. Maybe we won't hit 200. I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's an aspiration anyway. That would be super cool if we kind of like just um, hit the limit of 500 and then we yes. still have people on the waiting <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. That's an aspiration, but cool. Yeah, I am uh, I'm planning to meet Amber, uh, hopefully this by the end of this week. So I'll ask her about that. So great. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep that question in my queue. So, and that's a good, good reminder. So any other, any other question or comment? Maybe just a quick update that um, we're working on the Corelight side to hire um, a new Corelight community director. And the process is um, going just fine, not as fast as I'd like. Um, and I will say it's just really difficult to find highly qualified um, people who have this specific job experience. But um, we have found a couple of quite compelling candidates with very different the different points in their careers, one more mid-career and one more senior, and some other candidates as well, potentially. So I'm hoping there'll be news on that front. Um, but it's um, a tight job market. And I always um, like to spread the word that if you know, if anyone knows of anyone who might be interested in this role or future community roles, just to, um, to socialize that <laughs> on LinkedIn or privately. Uh, because after this role is filled, we'll have another role focus more um, on, on events uh, in the physical and virtual world. Um, what is sometimes called field marketing from a non, from a commercial perspective, but in the community um, space might be called events, activities, meetups, that sort of thing. So more hiring to be done, but first we have to um, replace Amber, no easy task. I agree. So thank you for providing that, that, that piece of update. I was wondering, but I completely forgot to ask. So thank you. For <laughs> you can always <laughs> ask. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Sure, that, that's a update. All right. So if there are no other questions or comments, then uh, we can adjourn for today. And then we'll hopefully meet next month where we will have all the cool updates of what we have done this month. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thanks, Fatima. Well Bye. Done. Bye, folks.